This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the amazing all-in-one website platform that makes starting, managing, and growing your brand an easy and unique experience. More on Squarespace and everything they have to offer later in the video. Oh boy, it is a good day to be a hater. My God, you see me personally, I never stopped hating. There was not a moment in time where I ever stopped hating. You know what I'm saying? I studied the greats, uh, Kendrick Lamar, Uncle Ruckus, um, Dave Chappelle from that episode with the player haters ball. Um, stink meaner from the boondocks. You see, as a learned man of hatred, I have come to really understand what it means to not let shit go. And boy, can I tell you how happy I was. I don't know if you could tell, but this chapter made me so happy. Dear God almighty, this chapter made, it just made every, every blood cell in my body light up with joy. I saw some tweets that effectively serve as leaks for this chapter, but I didn't want to believe it till I saw it. And oh boy, I wish I would have went into this one completely blind because I, I cannot tell you how happy I would have been if I just didn't know that that was coming at all, possibly. If I would have just got into the chapter and been like, oh, oh my God, karma's a bitch and you should have known better. I wish we could just all JoJo see what dance on this motherfucker's grave. I'm so happy, you guys. Welcome back to the channel. Let's go ahead and get into it. Today we're talking about One Piece chapter 1125. And yeah, again, I don't know if you can tell by that, but uh, I I thoroughly enjoyed this chapter. I had a very good time with it, and we're going to get into why that is a little bit later on. But first, let's go ahead and get started. We're coming into the uh, cover story. It's got Yamato, and th this is actually interesting. I think we actually should talk about this because it's Yamato, and it says that um, Minotomo, the carpenter that we met in Wano, he's missing. If you remember the last time on the cover story, um, somebody was trying to kidnap Yamato. Or no, no, someone was trying to kidnap a woman and Yamato saved her. Somebody's kidnapping people in Wano, I guess. I have no idea what that means, but that's actually pretty interesting. I hope we get some more, like like information on that <laughs> knowing Oda he's probably just going to leave that open as a mystery until one of us goes back to Wano or until this ties into like the main story basically but yeah I'm pretty excited who knows what that means I'm really interested to see what the hell is going on there the first notable thing we have happening in the chapter is Kaku and Robert bitch ass Lucci um and his dripped out bird they're coming back and they say that Stussy was killed in action now Lucci is reporting this so I don't know I don't really know too much about, like, I don't know how I should read this, basically. Because Kaku's face is still, like, Kaku's still pretty much feeling the emotions of, you know, a human being. You know what I'm saying? He's feeling what any regular person would feel in this. But Lucy still just looks mad. So I don't know if, like, he's, like, lying for Stussy. Because there's no way Stussy's gone. Like, there's no way that they off Stussy just off screen like that didn't happen so I can't tell if Lucci is actually covering for her and saying she's you know like she don't even worry about her she was killed in action just get her you know get her off the records we'll never see her again like and they're like he's like protecting her in some way I don't think that that's what's happening to be honest but it is weird that he just said that she was killed in action and not that she was a traitor and killed in action because if that's what was you know really happening then he would no doubt explain like you know we've all been had and I put her down myself or you know me and Kaku put her down and you know that's what happened but he's not saying that all he's saying is she's gone don't worry about it and Kaku isn't saying anything either so I'm really I really wonder what the hell's going on here because again there's no way I believe that Lucci's doing anybody any favor showing anyone any mercy but at the same time it's just it's weird maybe he just feels embarrassed that could be it too he just feels embarrassed that he didn't know that the same thing that was happening in water seven the same thing that he was doing in water seven got did to him maybe he feels a little bit embarrassed um that karma caught up to him karma's a bitch <laughs> But we keep going in the chapter and St. Saturn is talking to all of the vice admirals that basically let all of this horrible stuff happen. Which, I mean, that wasn't their fault. They didn't even really know what the hell they were doing on this island. So I'm not going to blame Vice Admiral Dahl or the Admiral with all those chins. It's hilarious, though, because this implies that Saturn, like, handpicked these vice admirals. And I just can't imagine you seeing a dude with that many chins going like, yeah, you gonna carry. Yeah, you come come with me, chin guy. We're, we're gonna get shit done. We also get a little bit more lore. Apparently, St. Saturn was the one that made sure that the giant robot was not scrapped uh, roughly 200 years ago. We get like a mini flashback. And it's like, you know, St. Saturn's explaining like, you know what, just I'll take the fall for this. If anybody discovers the giant robot and they ask, you know, why haven't we scrapped it? I'll say that it's my fault. We can't allow such a 
a, a, a scientific wonder to be scrapped. And that is just really ironic. I guess I would have never expected him to be the reason that the giant robot is still alive at all, but it, you know, I bet he's really kicking himself in the ass for that. I bet he's really beating himself up over that, you know, because if he would have just let it be scrapped, this whole arc would have went another way, all right? So if you think about it, well, hang on. Hang on, because I'm getting ahead of myself, guys. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's not let's not ruin the surprise, okay? Let's just keep going. Let's just keep reading the chapter to figure out what happens. How about that? But before we keep talking about these old men getting just what they deserve, we need to talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is dedicated to making the process of growing your brand or business an easy and unique experience. Let's say, for example, that you need to create your very own website. And if you do, you are in luck because you can get started with Squarespace Blueprint AI, which is amazing. They even have a really awesome drag and drop editor known as Fluid Engine, which really simplifies the process of creating your own website, but also lets it stay as unique as you want it to be. And even without Fluid Engine, the website templates that Squarespace offers are remarkably flexible, allowing you to choose between a ton of different categories like art, food, gaming, design, jewelry, restaurants, interior design, whatever you need, Squarespace has a website template tailored exactly to your needs. And you can even use Squarespace as your very own blog if you need to, sharing any photos, videos, or updates for your business whenever you need. And speaking of your business, Squarespace Squarespace also offers flexible payment options for any transactions that need to take place. From credit cards, PayPal, to Apple Pay, however your customers need to pay you, Squarespace has a way that they can do just that, including the option to pay now or later. So if you are thinking about creating your own website, head on over to squarespace.com and get started with a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to this link that's on the screen right now to receive 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. A very special thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and an equally special thank you to you for watching this video. And with that, we are back to the show. But we see Vice Admiral Doberman, um, he asks, so if it's such a bad thing that Vegapunk's message got out, St. Saturn, does that mean that there's some truth to the message that went out to the entire world? Which, yes, you idiot. All of you guys are on the wrong side. They're going to flood the world, and you're going to be the people that are flooding people, basically. Making thousands of millions of people drown because these old men cannot handle the things that they should be handling. But just for asking that, Vice Admiral Doberman, he gets, I guess, murdered? I don't, I don't really know. It just Saint Saturn retaliates, basically. Like, why would you even ask that, you impudent whelp, basically? And it's just like, you know, he's crashing out. He's crashing out. He must really know that this is mainly just all his fault, to be honest. But we go back to York, who's realizing, you know, that actually she didn't succeed in anything that she thought that she succeeded in and punk record starts to i think fly away or float away into the clouds good god just york cheeks for no reason that's crazy but it's revealed that all of the vega punks or at least all of them except for stella are still alive they're in like this amalgamation of all their bodies i think it's uh shaka's torso it's atlas's arms it, it looks freaky it honestly looks kind of scary i hope i don't think they can just interact with regular people like that well they can't anyway because the world thinks that vegapunk is just dead so they can't just go around and walk freely but they look like a frankenstein monster to be completely honest like it's it doesn't look play but it's still the people they're, they're our friends they are our friends and i'm pretty sure luffy's gonna think it's cool but honestly if i was there i'd be like ugh. <laughs> Y'all couldn't have figured something else out. But it also looks like all of their brains are intact too. So whenever they speak, I wonder if we're literally hearing all of their voices or just their thoughts or whatever. But it's really interesting. But it's all of the Vegapunks, obviously all of them except for the old man, Stella, and Lilith, who's with the Straw Hats and the Giants, and York, who is... Well, we just don't like York. She was the traitor. So, but they're still alive. So that's the that's the reveal here. And they're taking punk records with them. York can still access it, but, you know, it's better than, you know, all of punk records being in the hands of the Celestial Dragon. So another win for us, another win. Speaking of the Celestial Dragons, we go check on them and we get a little bit more from, I guess, their perspective. It's kind of funny. Well, this would be funny if the Celestial Dragons, you know, they're literally just slavers. I'll tell you what would be funny. If we took all the Celestial Dragons and we, like, flipped it, like, we made them the slaves, which... <laughs> Okay, just hear me out for a second. Like, they, like the scene that we get in this chapter is somebody being like, you know, I ordered uh, the, the beef, and then the chef's like, I'm terribly sorry. You know, our stocks have dwindled. This is because of the Revolutionary Army um, get attacking their food supplies and everything like that. And the fat dude, the Celestial Dragon, is like, this is unheard of, and he just pulls out a gun and he just shoots him. Now, what I think would be funny, let's flip it. It's the Celestial Dragons that is the cooks in this, and just the slaves in this situation. And I, I'm just imagining if I was there, and I was sitting 
sitting there. This is this is how the scene would play out if it was me, if I was at Mary Joy right now and the Celestial Dragons were my personal assistants. I'd be eating my dinner and I'd be like, damn, this is really good. Too good. Who made this? Bring the chef here. And the chef would be like, it was me, sir. And I'd be like, this is delicious. Cut off his hands. <laughs> like if you're gonna be a mustache twirling, just insufferable person, like you gotta go all the way. And I can't laugh at this because this is just sad. Like this is a regular person being put in this situation. But if it was St. Charlos as my personal cook, oh my God, every day I'd get up and I'd be like, wow, this is, this is really good off with his head. <laughs> like, I'm waking up with a passion tormenting these celestial dragons. But yeah, as it stands, this scene isn't funny. It's just showing us how really, really awful and stupid all of the celestial dragons are. I can't wait to get more lore on them because I just know the type of person that Oda is. He's gonna, well, actually, I don't know what he's gonna do with the celestial dragons. I know he's gonna write like the their entire history in a way that helps us understand. And usually with understanding comes like, you know, you feel less hatred. I don't think he's gonna do that with the celestial dragons. I think he's gonna be like, okay, so this is why they're like that. I still don't want you to feel bad for them though. And at least I hope he doesn't. And I don't think that he's gonna do that. I don't think, he, I don't think he's gonna say set up any sort of celestial dragon like redemption or anything type because we already got some celestial dragons being good like doflamingo's parents and that one celestial dragon that defended um shirahoshi um we don't need any more like the, the main thing about one piece is that you know no faction makes a person inherently evil it's just people are either evil or good and that's based on their actions it's just like the real world i we know that we don't need to see celestial dragons being redeemed i would like to see them being punished though so hopefully that is in the very very near future they're just going crazy they don't know how to take even the smallest inconvenience because they're they're just they are who they are basically well, this is when we get to my favorite part of the chapter and right before we get there we get a really cool scene saint garling shows up and he bro he just this, this is this is aura unprecedented amongst all of these old men he's easily the tallest the coolest and just the most powerful one there. I don't care anymore. Like, I don't know. I know we can't really power scale these old men, but if I was power scaling these old men, I would put them all in like a sorry D tier category. Even the bald dude with a sword, he might be C plus. Hell, I'll give him a B. He clashed with Zoro, kinda, but none of them have been impressive. This old moon shaped bastard. Oh no, I know he fights. I just know he fights. All right. And it's the fact that he's, they had to bring him in as the new Gorosei, which I didn't even explain. That's what's happening in this chapter. He's moving in and he's like, I've just been bestowed new orders. I will now be the official Gorosei, Saint Garling Figurling, okay? Defense science warrior god, okay? So I'm replacing Saint Saturn. He just got so much aura. He look, you, we know he fights from the God Valley flashback. We didn't really see him fight, but he's just, he, we know he got something. He's an old man, so he's out of his prime, but I, I don't know who he's gonna be fighting either. That's another thing, but we, you know he's gonna be getting into something. You know he's gonna be fighting somebody. And I can't wait to see what's happening, but I'm just so glad with this decision because I didn't respect none of these old weirdos, all right? All of their transformations sucked, and I don't even know if this guy has a transformation. He just might be a big dude with a sword. That might just be it. He might, you know who he reminds me of? Garp. That's who this old bastard reminds me of. He's got a weird ass hairstyle. And I just really, I'm, I love this character design so much. The Gorosei needed his aura. The Gorosei needed this character. The Gorosei needed this interest, all right? Because I didn't give a damn about any of them at all. I'll tell you that much. The, the best thing that they had was the bald dude with the sword. He looked pretty nice, but he was like, like Zora was able to hold him off for a second. If you want to actually make me scared for so, the Straw Hats and everybody else that we care about, he should have blitzed Zoro. He should have did something else. Like, yeah, they didn't really fight, but hell no. He, you shouldn't have even, you should have been more commanding. This guy, hell no. I really think if he was on Egghead, that shit would have went a different way. I know it would have too. You could just tell he means business, man. But what's interesting is they all like immediately are kind of like, what are you doing here? Remember your place, all right? You forget yourself. And and he's just like, he's not rude to them at all. He's just like, yeah, well, Emu just said I'm one of you guys. So I hope we can all work together to curb this rebellion that's coming okay like a, a an unprecedented level of rebellion is imminent is what he says and he's like i hope we can all work together to make sure that it's thwarted like he's just he's still calm they're talking down on his name and he's like i don't know why you're doing that okay because i'm one of you now 
dumb bitch. And then we get to my favorite part of the chapter, because if he's replacing Saint Saturn, what does that mean for Saint Saturn himself? Well, we get an answer to that immediately. And it looks like Ding dong, the bitch is dead. Emu is tired of this old bastard just ruining everything because he was the first one there. If you remember, Emu sent him to make sure that everything went well. And what happened was um, he went there and ended up calling everybody. He was like, yeah, I can't. I don't know what's happening and I can't stop it. Everybody else get over here. They jumped everybody that was there and they had Kizaru and Admiral there. They still couldn't get anything done. They only managed to kill an old man. And that's really it, because all of the other Vega Punks are alive. Punk Records is out of their hands, and the transmission went out, so the entire world knows that they're about to flood their asses. Like, they, they, he failed monumentally. I pro, I've Garling, if St. Figurlin Garling was the first person to go to Egghead Island, I don't think he would have needed a call for backup. Dead ass. I think he wouldn't have left it to anybody else. I think he would have just showed up started killing people, and then he would have left. The Straw Hats would have had a much harder time is what I think would have happened if they would have sent him instead. And I think Emu recognized that. Emu was like, hold on, who is that? Who is that badass old man with a sword? Why is he just sitting here on Marijoy? Nobody is even fighting up here. We need him out there in the fields, all right? But yeah, so St. Saturn just falls to his knees. He's clutching his neck, and, you know, I love to see it. I, I wish he, you know, you know, you know, I don't wish the best. You know what I'm saying? I, I might say that, you know, stay blessed. Boy, boy, fuck you. Die today. So I, I don't give a fuck who you hang with, is what I'm saying. Like, I was, I was watching all this, and I was like, man, it would be just so much cooler if he suffered just a little bit more, but it, it does look pretty terrifying to be completely honest. Like he's, it looks like he's struggling. I can't wait to see this in the anime because it just looks like, I, I don't know what the hell's happening. It looks like an explosion of hockey happens shortly before he's completely gone. But we get an explosion of what looks like maybe Conqueror's hockey because I see like the black lightning. Maybe that's coming from Emu himself. But Saturn is pleading like, you know, please have mercy. Like, how could I have known that Joy Boy would come back? And and, jo and Emu is just like, man, I do not care. You let him escape. He was there for a second. Which actually, hang on. that That is what Emu says. Emu says Saturn, Joy Boy was behind that escape and you let... Okay, he said. So, yeah, he's just mad that... He felt Joy Boy's hockey. That 100% all that's happening right now, Emu got spooked. He felt Joy Boy's hockey and he was like, oh my God, no. I really think what I said in that chapter review, that's really what happened. Like Emu wasn't there. So he felt that hockey and he was like, fuck, he's back too? What is happening out there, man? And all of that along with Vegapunk's transmission, like somebody had to be punished. If I was Emu, I'd get rid of all those bastards. But to be, this is... This is fair. This is truly fair. And to be fair, he is the one I hate the most. After we saw all of that with Kuma, Jenny, and Bonnie, oh man, it is so good to see him turn into a skeleton. Because that is what, we get that explosion and he just, like a skeleton falls to the ground. And it looked pretty painful. Oh man, he suffered and it wasn't long enough if you ask me. But boy, am I happy with that. Good job, Emu. All right, I don't really know what you want. I don't know what you're doing up there in that castle. I have no idea who you are, whether you're a man or a woman, or, you know, if you're in love with Vivi's ancestor, like so many people have, you know, uh, theorized. I don't know if you really want world domination, whatever. I mean, I'm sure you're evil and all that shit, but you know what, man? I owe you a drink for this one. All I wanted was for Saint Saturn to get his karma in this, in this, and, and Egghead is over. So I, I gave up hope. I thought we weren't gonna see it. Lo and behold, the person that came and delivered divine justice to that spider bastard was you, Emu. So, you know, we still, you know, we still don't see eye to eye, but you know what I'm saying? Between me and you, if I see you on the Grand Line or the Red Line or wherever the hell, I, you know, I, I'm gonna get you a drink because this, this really made me happy. This really made my day. Um, yep. I, I, I just love it. But then we get the closing of the chapter, okay? The closeout of the chapter involves the Revolutionary Army, and they're just putting more pieces together. They're putting pieces together, like, with the ancient weapons and how the Void Century most likely covered up a massive war, okay? And this involved the ancient technology or the ancient weapons, basically, in which all of this destruction plunged the world 200 meters deeper into the ocean. So, yeah, they're just putting a bunch of pieces together. Sabo chimes in, and he's like, you know, this explains why the Celestial Dragons are on the red line. 
line, the highest point in the entire planet. Um, Ivankov starts putting more pieces together too. Everybody's chiming in, but the chapter ends with Dragon basically like, you know, I'm trying to lay off Dragon, bro. I'm trying to lay off Dragon because I, like I, I talk about this with everybody whenever they bring it up. Obviously he's disappointing right now. And you know, he hasn't done anything and we haven't really seen adequate justifications for why he hasn't done anything. Do I think that's a fault on the writing? Absolutely not. I fully believe that when Oda uses his character, he is not going to waste Dragon. The thing is though, there's so many things that happen that I need more context to actually be forgiving of his character. The thing that I still do not forgive at all, they did not go get Jenny. I don't, I don't care what logical, like so many people, I was, I always say like, if that was Luffy, there's no way he would have let that happen. And people are quick to point out, you know, well, Luffy's not the leader of a revolutionary army. He can't be that reckless. I completely agree with you. Kuma though, there is not a soul in the world that can convince me that it is within Kuma's character to not go get Jenny. It doesn't, I don't give, it does not matter. It truly does not matter. And it like, I just, I just can't see, I just, I just, I can't, I can't see it. I don't know. And then it's added, added to that. It's the fact that Sabo went to go get Kuma. So Dragon wasn't even going to get Kuma. Sabo had to be like, y'all are tripping. They got my boy. I'm going to marry Joy. What the fuck? Fisher Tiger climbed up there and freed the slaves. I, bitch, I can do it. All right. If Dragon is so strong as he is, but go, just go over there, crash out and go get it. But Kuma, especially like, that's why I keep mentioning, like, why didn't Kuma go get Jenny? He's got the pawpaw paw fruit, bro. It would be so simple for him to pull up on Mary Joy and just paw paw themselves the fuck out of there. I know that it needed to happen for plot, so I'm not taking any points away from Kuma's character, but I think I have to just blame Dragon for it, man, because why the hell are you letting all these people that are close to you suffer? It's, it's, it's horrible. I hate it. But yeah, so Dragon's like, you know, we must hurry and achieve victory for our cause before the people of the world kill each other to secure habitable land. And it's like, he's basically saying, you know, Vega punk that message that rang out like yeah it's important and it's good that people know about it but listen people aren't gonna just like start acting in the interest of peace which is true a lot of people are gonna be like i just want to live so i'm gonna try to find the one piece to to live and people might go over to blackbeard side because that's pretty much the only thing he's been preaching like hey if you join me we will make the world chaos. You will be, you will live like a king. It will be chaos and it's gonna be my ideal world, but you know what? You might be safe, maybe. It's definitely easier than doing the right thing, all right? You don't wanna fight for peace, not with all this crazy shit going on. Just join the Blackbeard Pirates. We gonna, we gonna get there, for real. And so it's a real concern. He has a point and he's, uh, I don't even, to be honest, I don't even know if he's saying we need to act now or if he's saying like, when we do act, we're gonna act. I can't tell with him, man, and I can't give him the benefit of the doubt anymore. So it's just like, to close that section out, to close, to not talk about Dragon anymore, I just mean to say, I do not think Oda will waste his character. I'm excited to see when he finally does something. Very excited to see that. Um, but I have not seen enough to really be excited whenever I see him. To be honest, Sabo undermines him by just existing to be completely honest like sabo's character is such a bastion of hope freedom they call him the flame emperor don't nobody talk about dragon all they say is he's the he's the he's got the most like bounty in the world or something like he's the most wanted man in the world like i don't give a damn i don't give a fuck they gave kid three billion berries i don't give a fuck i do not care how many berries that they would give me if i captured you i want to see i want to see you do something all right i want to see you crash something that's what i want but yeah that's about it for this chapter um i really liked it a whole lot um as for the mvp for this chapter i can't believe i'm saying this but i'm giving it to emu sama all right i'll even put the sama on his name and give him some respect because all i all, all i want is for these old ass bastards to go away it's all i want and now we are one-fifths of the way completed to that i hope i don't end up hating saint garling as much as as i hated saint saturn but you know anything's possible so we will see you know what i'm saying i hope vice admiral doll gets out of there i hope she realizes she's on the wrong side praying for her and her happiness let me know what you guys think what do you think the mvp of this chapter is is it saint figurlin garland for walking in that room like a boss because honest to god that is it's it's honestly crazy like that is so much aura i love it so much or maybe the mvp is saint saturn for finally dying he did the one honorable thing ever and he just got out of the story yeah, and may he join the likes of absalom 
and may we never mention him ever again unless we are talking down on his name because he never deserved respect in the first place. That's for you, Kuma. I guess I'll go ahead. And so I'm almost done with Kingdom Hearts. If you are watching on Twitch, it's been a crash out, but it's been very fun. As soon as that is done, we are going to put out Kingdom Hearts is hilarious. Um, Any's Lobby is well on its way. I was hoping to get that out this next upcoming week, and we still might. We still might. Um, but just know I'm putting, like, I want that one to be special. The Mary means a lot to me. So if you're wondering where that is, it's coming. It's going to be the next One Piece is Hilarious video. We're going to do Bleach after that. But uh, Kakashi is Hilarious is nearly finished um, as of recording this video. So expect that if it's not already out. And then Innie's Lobby and then Kingdom Hearts and then Bleach and then... Well, maybe we'll keep One Piece rolling. Who knows? But either way, that's like all the stuff that I'm working on. Uh, but yeah, uh, just a final again, just if you want to watch me on Twitch crash out, uh, consider checking out the Twitch. Um, another thank you to my Patreon um, for making all of this possible. I've been having a really amazing time, but that's it. Yeah, yeah, enough talking, enough talking. I'm going to go ahead and get back to work. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being interested. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one.